we have to install all of that ourselves. And I'm not opposed to doing either one of them. Um, it's just you have to take those costs into account because they can be fairly expensive. I mean, as, as a purchase of a piece of property goes, it may be just a small fraction of that, but but still we're talking, you know, maybe twenty, maybe thirty thousand dollars to put all of that stuff in. Uh, could even be more, but but probably I think we can get it done for twenty to twenty five probably. So, uh, but it's just another part of the the consideration for that. So um, so that's part of it. The other part that I wanted to kind of talk about today was the income building on there because that is a huge factor in in most people's minds is, is probably one of the biggest roadblocks of how to proceed into kind of a recreation property adventure project whether it's the homestead the off-grid um, life whether it's running a resort like what we've been doing um, or just offering some nightly rentals to supplement uh, the income on the property the income is an important part of that. It's both in getting it started and in keeping it going. It has to be sustainable or kind of what's the point. I mean, you can do it for the love of it as long as you're willing to work sort of two jobs. You know, the the one that you love doing and the one that you might not love so much doing just to help pay for the first one. So, um, so the income producing part of this is is really kind of a really big key issue. And... In the last video, um, I ask you to make a list of things that have potential income producing capability uh, on whatever kind of a project that you'd want. Now, again, our background is sort of the resorts. And so to us, I can easily go in and say, OK, well, if I want to establish something where I'm going to have a nightly lodging element or component in there, it's easy. It's like, OK, I, I need to find a way to either, you know, at the very most basic part of it rent campsites out and you know clear some brush out set up some nice campsites get them set up with uh, a little bit of amenities that people can do uh, just you know not like you know, possibly primitive camping just something where you don't necessarily have to provide electricity and, and water and everything right at the site uh, you would have to I think in order to be able to attract people that are being going to be willing to pay money you're going to have to put in on something like that you would have to put in at least a shower house uh, so you are going to have to have water and electricity and and heated water i've actually been in places where heating water heated water was not an option <laughs> it was um you know when you go in and it's hot out and you take a, a shower in a shower house that's being pumped straight out of a well and not through a water heater uh, that can be a shocking experience um so i mean you want to provide the stuff that people are going to need or want uh, to make their experience a good one and so so even but starting with something as minimal as that you know clearing out some areas for that and putting in a, a little bit of facilities there for taking a shower and using a restroom and things like that are going to um, are going to take a little bit of effort but those are things that you can start really very inexpensively as far as starting to produce income. I mean, one little shower house uh, can, you know, cover 20 or so camping sites. So that's, you know, finding those sources of income is good. Uh, with the, the like the treehouse place and the RV park that we've got, that has been expanded out to pools and, and uh, shower houses, laundry facilities and uh, playgrounds and things like that. And even the playgrounds. Uh, they don't generate income themselves specifically, but they make an amenity that makes your other things that do create income more attractive to guests. So, you know, if, if, if that's kind of part of your plan, you know, that's a fairly inexpensive way to get started uh, generating steady income. And to be honest, you have to look at this kind of as a business where you decide what is the the least amount of money that I need to make in order to sustain this whole thing? And you know, for that's going to be different for everybody depending on the scope and the size. But it's it's still going to matter in the fact that you've got to decide what that is, what that looks like, and 
And when you start out, you may start out, for example, when we bought our first couple cabins, we started out with the, the investment was a pretty minimal investment. It was around $50,000, I think, by the time we did the purchase. We also got a construction loan to start doing some renovations, and we put a little bit of our own money into it. So it was not a real expensive thing. And, and you know, one of the brick walls that you hit right away um, in the coaching that we've done with real estate investing, one of the brick walls that people run into all the time, especially with an investment property, is they see all of the expense of it, but they really don't take into account the income that it produces. Anyway, so if you are watching this, if you have not done so yet, go to the bottom of the video, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, click it to all notifications. And then uh, if you like what you're seeing and what you're learning here, go ahead and click the like button. Remember, subscribe and hit the notification bell to start with. That way you won't miss out on any of the videos that we do. You won't miss out on any of the updates or the experiences that we're posting up uh, with the tree houses or the resort thing or the lake or whatever else like that. Uh, all of these things will help you, I believe, on your journey to establish an, an adventure lifestyle for yourself. So until next time, do those things and we'll see you later.